vote on something? His neck kind of. What is going on? Oh. All right. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Jump it on. We gotta do our intro first. Yeah, but we gotta do it. Well, once he do the intro for us. Go right now. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> nah, my nigga, this is dedication. This is anti-hesitation. It's a real nigga celebration. What's it's happening, good decoration. people? What up, what up? Boy, Jay Powell checking in. It's your girl, Chanel. We going live relationship status, you dig, on Power 108.9. We about to kick this thing off, man. The topic for this evening is secrets. So one of the greatest concerns in many romantic relationships involves secrecy versus privacy. One partner thinks that she deserves a bit of privacy. The other views this desire as secrecy, which is which. How can we know the difference between the two and how should we navigate between these two extremes? I'll let you tackle privacy first. <laughs> so privacy is best defined as the state or condition of being free from observation and disturbance by other people. For instance, when you leave a public event and return to the privacy of your own home, the person who sat next to you at the public event can no longer stare at, talk to, or otherwise annoy you. In general, keeping certain things private involves setting and maintaining boundaries that align with your individual needs, values, and beliefs. When your privacy is violated, you may feel angry and rightfully so with a desire to pull away from whoever spoiled your privacy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get that secrecy and then we'll get into the conversation, Paris. So secrecy is the active state of intentionally keeping information hidden from one or more people in general beyond professional requirements for confidentiality. If you keep something secret, it's because you fear the impact on yourself or others that the information might have if it were openly known. What often underlies secrecy is a fear of judgment and or reprisal. When your secrecy is violated, you may feel as if you've lost control over the information and how others respond to it. Thus, you might feel afraid, anxious, concerned, and angry and want to pull away. So what do you guys think about secrecy in the context of relationships? Do you think that if someone held a secret, is that for the betterment of relationship or do you think it's a violation of boundaries? I feel like in a relationship, mm -hmm. if you feel like, especially based on, based on this definition of like fearing the judgment and everything, mm -hmm. if you feel like you have to hold secrets with someone, you probably shouldn't be in a relationship with them. Right. I feel like there shouldn't necessarily be secrecy in a relationship because it kind of like causes other toxic problems later. Mm -hmm. um, and you, and if that secret comes out, it's just, terrible sometimes <laughs> at what point though um i guess at what point do you draw the line where it goes from privacy which mm -hmm. according to the definition you know it's okay to have some privacy but at what point does it cross the line and get into secrecy you know because a lot of times you know people withhold and for and even in the context of friendships people withhold information you know and they say well you know, i didn't want they think it may have a certain negative impact on the person or they have their own reasons for not sharing, you know, information. But is it does it benefit the relationship? Does it benefit the friendship? You know, what do you think about that? I mean, to piggyback on what P said, I mean, I think that if you are in a relationship and in a space with your partner, mm -hmm. um, you should be able to share a lot of things amongst each other. Mm -hmm. Now, I do agree that, you know, cer certain conversations, for example, like, you know, women having amongst each other or men having amongst each other, um, 
you know, is a, is a part of, I guess, the the privacy thing where it's not harmful. It's just girl time, just like it's boy time. So, right. um, but I think it crosses a line if it starts to become detrimental to your relationship and affecting it in the ways that are more negative than they are positive. And um, so how do you, but how do you take yourself out of it? Because I, 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 you know, we've all probably been in a situation where we had a piece of information that we knew would have a negative impact on a partner spouse on a friend you know and we didn't know how to communicate it and we knew that it would have a negative you know effect so how do you how do you manage that because i I mean we've all been in that i know i have how do you and i've had i've had information you know withheld you know i'm thinking about and i i mean just to jump start this off so we can kind of get into it like i i think when i think when i was preparing this topic it took me back to a situation, you know, those college days, because that's when I experienced, I I would say, you know, the most craziness. But I was dating this guy, right? And he he really liked me and I liked him too. And um, we were dating for about, I would say two to three months and things were good. But he had this secret and I didn't know about it and, and everybody else knew about it except for me. And he had gotten, he was a, he was a freshman in college and I was actually a junior. And he had gotten a girl pregnant his first semester and everybody knew except for me. And it happened before we met, but nonetheless, this girl is walking around campus pregnant. And so when I found out, I just could not wrap my mind around it. Cause I'm like, you guys knew all this time. Like you could have saved me so much time. So, I mean, cause I was young at the time. So Quite naturally, I'm not going, you know, I, w- I discontinued the, the relationship, but I could have avoided like developing that emotional attachment. But he was so sincere in his apology. And I mean, I guess the person who he had gotten, you know, pregnant, they didn't have like a real relationship. They were they were freshmen, you know, and they were doing whatever. And, and that was the end result, you know, and he was doing whatever he could possibly do to make me OK with the situation. But it just didn't work for me like uh, to the extent that uh, of course he had to have a certain level of communication because they're going to have a baby together Mm -hmm. so you know they would meet out in the lobby of you know the dormitory or what have you but i was like i'm sorry i just i just can't wrap my mind around it well in a situation like that i mean for one if if the community knows then it definitely needs to be a conversation had um with the with the pregnancy situation, I mean, there's so many different factors involved in that. You know, I don't know how I don't know the you know <laughs> it's not to go in the <laughs> details of it, but right. understand when was she pregnant? When did she tell him she was pregnant? Had y'all already been engaged in your conversations and connecting? I mean, it's just certain things that are involved. But I mean, honestly, you know. People, people have to in a in a situation like that. You have to be open and and transparent with the individual that you're involved with because it at least gives them the chance to know what they're getting themselves into. Right. Um, you know, moving forward. But like in that, that is the right way to do it. But how many times have we found ourselves in situations where? the shoe was on the other foot, you know, and you have a certain situation happen. I could think of countless scenarios, not necessarily shoe on the other foot, but just being in a situation where if I put the shoe on the other foot, it's like, I don't know, like scenario where I, it was so, if I start talking about my college days, we'd be here forever talking about drama, but you know, maybe your girlfriend liking your dude, or maybe they even having a scenario where they got hooked you know they hooked up maybe even before you maybe during you or whatever the case how do you communicate that or do you or do you do you decide okay is this going to edify the relationship or you know is it going to damage the relationship like how do you how do you set those boundaries like if you can think back to a time where you was in a situation where you know maybe you had knowledge of or engaged in like how did you handle it and what was your rationale behind it? I mean, in, in, in when I was involved, like being on, being a person with the secret, you know what I'm saying? I just, I was just like, man, like if I, if I feel like it's something that's getting to a point and out of hand, like I was already contemplating how I'm going to break 
the news anyway. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for myself, man, I, I like to just um, communicate what's, what's going on at times, especially, like, if it's something that has built up, you know what I'm saying, to come from that. And, yeah. and again, every everything – some of these secrets don't necessarily have to be a cheating thing. You know what right, I'm saying? Absolutely. Like it don't have to be something like that, but right. you know, there are times, man, like where it's certain bits of information that are vital for the other person to know, you know, and just trying to figure out a way to communicate that effectively mm -hmm. um, to the individual, because I mean, it's somebody you care about, it's somebody right. you love. And you know, the reason why you do it in the first place is because you're trying to protect them or, yeah. you know, protect somebody or something in some certain way. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I'm not saying, again, every situation is different. Um, but at the end of the day, man, you know, you rocking with them like how you say, you got to try to break that toll. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. Let's hop, jump on in to eight secrets that will almost always hurt a relationship no matter what oh, that's in here <laughs> yeah where you at you know we got to read the scripture you know what i'm saying we got to flip to the bible which chapter we are <laughs> which hymn we on <laughs> all right so i i mean i got eight secrets that i know like and i don't, I don't really want to start off i don't want to do it in order i want to do it out of order because i want to talk about some of this I because like I was trying to warm y'all up. Two of these is the same though, kind of. No. One and three. Oh well, maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> well, not history not necessarily because you can have an emotional affair yeah. and not actually have sexual intercourse, and then you could just go all the way out there. So when we come back, guys, we're gonna jump into these eight secrets oh, that will also. Oh my god. <laughs> always hurt a relationship oh my god <laughs> <So bad. laughs> chanel scott a Jay relationship Powell, man. power 108.9 <laughs> that will always hurt a relationship no matter what man we can't say that it's been people that stuck with people who've done all of these you want to answer that, don't you? Mental illness, that's tough. I bet it's just killing you seeing the soft off. glow just inches away. Like if you Someone wants to tell you something depression. or ask or you something. You oh, come on. Anxiety. Answer it already. Like at my own real birth. So you got glaucoma just so clear. That wasn't my like, fault. Real, Next time, like, ignore your inner voice. Like Don't text and drop. Stay up on like what's happening here at Power. That's We've got new shows, that's new guests, a relationship and status new events to help us connect with the community. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Power 108.9. You can also go to Power1089.com to get all of the updated news and happenings here at Power. Thanks for listening. But where I work. That's still that's still be kinda, you know, nerve bracket for people, man. So they be like, oh, shit, we're gonna be out. Uh, shit's gonna be out, you know what I'm saying? Like some dealing with something medically. That's tough, man. Yeah. 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 You say you love them, man. Yeah. 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 But what's but yeah. Even about, man, if you don't fell in love with somebody, but if you don't fell in love with somebody, you know, so you, you always person to say, like, look, you Like she was saying, I want to be taken care of. And That's so crazy. but she said that like he can't <laughs>
this is what she said. Let me finish. But but look, she was saying that she has to carry the groceries. Like he used to carry the groceries, of course, because he's a man. But now, I know. But but her whole thing was. Some of y'all females way too extra. When you carry your groceries before you was with him, like you can carry your own. Groceries. Yeah, but this is her mentality of wanting because everybody's not like this, obviously. And I'm literally not. Like I'm not looking for a man to take care of me. Um, I'm looking for partnership. But some people are looking. That's P O W E. Looking to be taken care of. Who wanted to? I even go. Now let's get you back to the show. Hey Jesus. Take care of me, though. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Looking for Jesus. Oh you my are God! Crazy. Okay, let me see what's going on in these comments. All right, guys, it's your girl Chanel. Last time that I checked, oh, check, check. it was five chains on my neck. Early? It was no smut on my neck. Your girl Chanel, a relationship status. It's your boy Jay Powell. No on Power 108, Perk 9. Oh, my bad, guys. I need to turn my phone down. But uh, while we was on break, we was talking about uh, it was a show on Ayala Van Zandt where there was a young lady and a gentleman. He had diabetes. And in my opinion, I feel like if you have like a, a disease that could be um, terminal, you know, that that's something that you need to communicate with your significant other. And in this particular situation, she knew that he had diabetes but then he lost his legs. And so she was struggling with whether she should stay or whether she should go because she said she wanted to be taken care of. And like, after he lost his legs, like he could no longer carry groceries. So she had to carry the groceries. And then other things that she felt like a man should do, you know, she was saying that she had to do and they hadn't gotten married yet. So that was the issue. Like, do we, you know, get married or do we not? But the, how it relates to the show is I was saying that I feel like if you connect with someone, you're dating someone and they have a terminal illness or something that could be life impacting later on, then that needs to be communicated. Mm -hmm. Just like STDs. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think Now you know you gotta communicate current STDs. That's a that's a no brainer. But do you talk about your history? And we can start right there since I brought I it like, up. I feel like on that in, in that instance, that's like a, a that's a fine line between privacy and secrecy. If you have like a current like ongoing STD or whatever the situation is, that's a secret that needs to be told. But if you've had like I guess a STI in the past that cleared up or something. That would gonna go on the line of privacy because okay. it's like, say if I'm like 50 years old and I had an STI when I was 20, why am I about to tell my significant other that now? Like that's just unnecessary, like chaos for no reason. I agree with you on it, especially if for me personally, like I demand that whoever I'm sexually active with before that we go get tested together. Like, so you do. Mm -hmm. You require test results before you guys cross the line. Yes, <laughs> this is about to be <laughs> over onto a whole nother topic. That's amazing and commendable. Appreciate it. Josh. <laughs> and not just trust the pretty face out here. I'm sorry, y'all. Just think about the groceries. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's her. That is that is her. I mean uh, selfish. Paris paraphrased it absolutely amazing. Way to go, P. I, I just need a second. I just can know. can we move forward? We can. Absolutely. Just think okay. about the groceries though. That's you just thinking about the groceries? Yeah. Okay. So what about the baggage? Um, number four. Even though everyone comes into a relationship with baggage, it can still be difficult to talk about. And yet you definitely should. If you aren't open and honest about critical experiences you've had, there is an increased likelihood that your past will play out and haunt your present. Uh, Lozano says, and that's not good. Lozano is someone, it's a marriage therapist, and they were actually quoted early in the topics, but since we're skipping, we don't know who that person is. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's um, that's extremely important because it helps you understand how to navigate through situations, um, circumstances with your significant other by learning their history 
or things that, you know, whatever their baggage is at the time, I don't know. But I, I do think it's very important because it just gives you an overview on what's going on. Now, obviously, you learn a little bit more of the baggage the further along you get in the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there there are some things that, that are important, you know, from the gate just to help you understand, especially when it comes to a person's temperament or, mm -hmm. you know, how they handle adversity or things like that. And you can understand that by going through some things that may have happened in the past. So mm -hmm. for sure. Now, the thing about that, and I absolutely agree that you should be able to create that space where you can be transparent about experiences that critical experiences like what the topic says. But then, you know, when it's early on in a relationship or, you know, the getting to know stage, people can come across as being judgmental, you know. And so how much do you share? No more still judge you. That's that why we're talking about that, because to be honest, that's really mm -hmm. the reason a lot of people pull back in so many, because they it's that fear of being judged. Mm -hmm. But I think the individual just got to say F it and like, put it man, out yeah, you just got to put it out there, man, and let God, because everybody got stuff. And right. it's so crazy because the person that, if they're willing to judge you like that, that means they probably got some shit that they ain't told you, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the reason why they so quick to jump the gun about oh like i can't believe you did that or you know woo -woo. and and that that's not cool man especially when we both grown and we trying to handle this thing maturely and in a, in a right way so that we can better our situation mm -hmm. you know because it, it's like all it, a lot of these things all of these things whatever it's like how much more does that strengthen the relationship when you can overcome some of these things or have some of these hard conversations you know what i'm saying because it brings you and your partner closer together you know, being able to talk about these things. I wish there were more people that thought like that. But nowadays, in my opinion, people look for reasons to walk away. They look for reasons. You but, guys... that, but that's the other, again, we hitting on every reason why a person is like this. Close mouth. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. because it's like, man, I'm investing in this person. I really like this person. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I want to tell them something. You know what I mean? To, because I, I want to be vulnerable with them. I want I want them to learn something about me. Maybe that'll help them open up about something. But then how do they take that? Right. You know what I'm saying? And when I tell them, will they protect me after I've told them? Right. A lot yes. of people be on that sucker shit for real. Like they're, you sitting up there having a moment with somebody you care about and you tell them some shit. And then next thing you know, they done blabbed off to somebody about what's going on. That shit ain't cool, man. Right. You feel me? So I, I you know, I'm with you like we got to get to the point where we can have these conversations and open that up because then too it also stops a lot of the hurt and a lot of these bad cycles that are going on that we keep recreating and continue to hurt people that we supposed to love or like or whatever because we're doing these things mm -hmm. we got to get to the point where that's just fair game free game for everybody and what I do for you I want you to give that back to me mm -hmm. I think also recognizing that, like the other one said, everybody has baggage. There is no perfect situation. There is no perfect relationship. We all have had experiences, some worse than others, and just given that space and grace to really get to know somebody and not judge them based off of something that happened in their past. Because people do have this expectation or this standard. We are and, human. Yeah, but You know what I'm saying? I know, but that ain't my experience. That's why I'm saying this. Like, you know. No, I know, but but too, like that's what I'm saying. That that's that's the reason why we're here having the conversation because it's people at home, there's people listening, there's people tuned in that are dealing with this every mm -hmm. day. And instead of them coming out and expressing certain things, because here's the other thing too. Some of these, right, mm -hmm. are things that you can grow from and be better than, right? So something that you might have did at 20, you ain't gonna do that same thing at 25. So it's like don't don't be so quick to, to judge or put somebody out there like that, especially when they could be in a place of growth themselves. Mm -hmm. So you already blocking blocking the blessing because you throwing out them judgment or that negative them, them negative vibes on a person who's just trying to come clean and be open about something so they can continue to move forward. And so y'all can continue to move forward. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we got to get to the point where it's past that. But how much is too much? Like just playing down that's, if that's your partner ain't never ain't never no such thing as too much 
Hey man, if I'm riding with you, I'm riding with you. Like I want you to be as open as as a book to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be that to 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 you and for you. Right. You feel me? Like I, we got to get to the point where we setting these limitations on things. Like mm-hmm. it don't matter what it is. Like if I love you, lay it on me, champ. Whatever mm-hmm. that means, whatever that is. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know you can count on me. Like I'm not just gonna sit up there and turn my back on you just because you're sharing um, something personal and private. Mm-hmm. Because if that's the case, all of us will be alone in this world. Mm-hmm. Everybody gone through something, right? It's, right? it's It's been a man who's been beat. It's been a woman who's been molested or, or raped. It's been um, somebody that's dealing with some mental illness, somebody that's, you know, dealt with some type of disease or something yeah. going on. It's something that we all are dealing with that hits close to home. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's not fair, man, that we sitting up here judging somebody and then you turn your back on somebody because, they sharing something with you or whatever. And to make somebody feel comfortable where they want to open up and not feel that as right, well. Right. That's another part of it too, because I think when you, when you get that vibe and that feeling that somebody is like, um, man, I don't know. Cause I don't know how they're going to be. Cause you kind of hear how they react to stuff mm-hmm. or, or you've already kind of put that tester out there. So you done thrown it and then, and then they catch it. And they, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, then that kind of makes you feel a little crazy. And then that starts that 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 cycle of right. fuck man, I want to talk to my girl, man, but I ain't like I don't even know if she's ready for that. Like, fuck it, I'll just keep it to myself. Mm-hmm. Or or you'll tell it to somebody that is willing to listen. Right. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And that, that's the other unfortunate part of it. Like, I don't want I don't want to have somebody, um, I don't wanna I don't wanna have somebody, you know what I'm saying, that I can't rock with on that level. You right. feel me? And, and, you know, and that's just my opinion, you know what I'm saying? And, and I also feel too, man, like we got to create that type of environment with the people that we rock with like that. Mm-hmm. And too, man, y'all get off that sucker shit and stop telling folks business, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like protect, protect them folks. Even when you stop fucking with them, still protect them. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't live by that code either. We still be out here, man, running our mouth. So then when you done with a person, now you definitely telling all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's lame, shorty. Like, don't do that. Well, there you have it, guys. We are changing the narrative <laughs> on secrecy and privacy and judgment. We, we we could really call this show judgment for real. But guys, we're going to be back with secrets on Power 108.9. It's your girl Chanel on relationship status. Jay Powell, check it in. We'll be back. Check it out. Check it in. <laughs> check it out. for me to do. 
Cause, Cause I've been on the other end of that. Like people don't understand. Like I done been that person. I've been in the blogs, being put out on blast and hear to the world. Like that shit ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? And people and people that do it, it's like, bro, you you do it for that second and then what? You know what I'm saying? Like you do it for that second and then what? So what? So what about my kids? You feel me? Like you ain't think about them. It's just like you ain't thinking about none of that, dog. Like yeah, I. But even friends, though, family, you feel me? Like, everybody, anything that has to do with a relationship in some type of way, this shit be all bad, man. People be on some real lame shit. Like, they don't, they don't respect that shit how it's supposed to go. I think that's where they all throw it, man. It's a part of it. Like, hey, really, like, like, you know, Because it's like, all right, I've been going, I've been on it. Do I do I be on the sucker shit or do I do it? You know what I'm saying? For me, it ain't even a question. I'm never, I'm never gonna be on no lane. Yeah. Because people hey, need hey, to hear it. Real, need to hear real, what you're real quick, let me say this. Yeah. Because I, I got to say this. Say it. So Nipsey's funeral was today. Yes. And let me tell y'all something, man. Just on a side note. The way that London Lauren. Lauren, Lauren London. London, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. The way that Lauren London spoke on that man and their relationship. Y'all better go find that. Some of y'all playing out here. That real dedication, that real love, and how they was vibing and building and going through stuff and growing through stuff and felt every word, man. Salute to that queen, man. I couldn't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? But that's dope to see that they had that kind of relationship and that kind of bond. You know what I'm saying? Where they was building and, and on that type of level, man. So salute. I, I had to just speak on that, man, because I watched that. That was amazing. I saw some uh, different um, clips of it, but there's not a lot of people nowadays who are intentional. You know, people kind of just kind of come and feel their way, test it out, play around, but you don't get that intentionality. That's rare. Mm -hmm. So, and I think even think on the topic, though, being intentional really does block some of the the anxiousness that you get with like 
secrecy and stuff like if you're intentional about like growing and being with someone and being true to yourself and just true to the world in general like you don't want no fraudulence around your name period right. so if hey, can you say that one more time <laughs> i think i think a motherfucker missed that can you say that the way that you <laughs> listen you do not want no fraudulence around your name like in any way shape or form because it's like if you move fraudulently in one aspect of your life you how can you balance that out like it doesn't really that's not how it works like right. you're bound to either let that slip into another aspect and i had to see that a lot growing up with people and it's just like on the matter of like holding secrets like if you if you you know what it physically feels like to be holding a secret you either get anxious you feel like kind of jumpy nervous around the person that you holding the secret from whatever you got those thoughts running through your mind constantly and those things need to be let out because right. that shows a level of respect that you have for the person when you have that high regard for them mm -hmm. you're saying that and you tell them a secret you're saying that i respect you and i honor you enough for you to be able to a lot be allowed to make your own decisions with this information if you don't if you withheld uh withhold secrets for some from somebody you're not giving them the chance to make their own decision and that's not fair that's really selfish but where do you draw the line because I, I mean i really want to delve into this piece of it where do you draw the line between secrecy and privacy because some people may feel entitled to certain information and then maybe the other person is like i don't owe you that so in my in, in my opinion right with me i feel like whatever's going on between me and my significant other that's privacy you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. amongst what was going on at home that that don't really need to be for everybody else out there you right. feel me like the secrecy aspect you know what i'm saying with me and my significant other like we should I feel like we should be able to be pretty much an open book with each other, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And being, being transparent and, and, um, open about a lot of things going on now. Um, again, you know, secrecy doesn't always have to be something as in cheating or something like that, because mm -hmm. I do feel that too. Um, certain things are for women to keep and certain things are for men to keep you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying as long mm -hmm. as it's not something that's gonna hurt my partner or something like that then then i don't really feel like there's anything wrong with that so let me ask you this because we're talking um in the context you said partner so that that um that when you say that then it's assumed that you guys are in a fully committed relationship but what about in a dating phase? Like, where do you draw the line between secrecy and privacy? Because one person may feel like, well, you should have told me. And the other person may feel like, well, it's none of your business. I don't draw no line. I, I, I want, like, shit, I done came on this show and talked about me being a cheater. So, <laughs> you feel me? Like, it, I just feel like, just, and here's another thing, too. Like, somebody's past don't don't mean that that's who they are. Mm -hmm. even at the time of them doing something that still don't mean that that's who they are you know what i'm saying like i've had plenty of moments where i've made plenty of mistakes and i'm just all about trying to better myself each day that i get to wake up on this earth mm -hmm. um so for myself you know starting out from the gate it's like boom 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 all right see how you handle that and go from there cool boom 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 right like i'm not me personally, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold back. Now that doesn't mean I'm just gonna drop the whole load. You feel me? Like right. obviously, you 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 see how you building with the person, mm -hmm. and you keep going. But I do think that that some things are necessary. Throwing out some hard questions and scenarios from the beginning are necessary because I want to know how we ride and how we rock it. Right. Because I'm gonna know if I'm just gonna knock you down or if I'm trying to get at you. You feel me? Like. <laughs> I'm just saying, like people, people know, women know, just like men know. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying what I'm what I'm on currently. I'm just right. saying, I'm just, like, I'm just right. Women know, like you look at somebody, you like, I could just kick it with hoes, or I could see myself building with hoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's just like a man, like he got it on his mind where he at with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and is that from the start? I think, for the most part, in my opinion, hell yeah, people know how you how you don't know. Mm -hmm. Shit, we can go house shop and pick this and make all these goddamn decisions. What kind of car we want? Nah, but 
you can't, you know what I'm saying? At, at least in your intent, like, right? She talked about intention. Like, how y'all talk about intention? Like, mm -hmm. you, you see something and you get a feeling. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, I, I can't just play with that. I got, you know what I'm saying? I want to see what's happening. Right. Okay. All right. So I want to talk about this one. Your tendency towards jealousy. If you've been in difficult relationships in the past or if you've experienced cheating, it can be difficult to truly trust your partner. Jealousy within relationships typically comes down to fear of abandonment and not feeling good enough. If this is an ongoing issue, it can have an impact on your relationship and may even be its undoing. So go ahead and tell your partner. The two of you can figure out ways to rebuild trust and make each other feel more comfortable. First and foremost, um, to those who are dealing with number eight, there has to be a level of <laughs> healing Yes. Forgiveness mm -hmm. of yourself and the other, mm -hmm. because a lot of this has to do with the space that the actual person is in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if they're able to get to a point where they can um, be be in a much better space mentally, spiritually, emotionally and all of that good stuff, then you don't you you use your past situations as situations to learn from and to help you get better as a person as a partner and two that helps you to put up boundaries and certain things that where if you get a sign or if you feel a way you think you'll react differently you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. instead of um shutting down you'll open up or if somebody actually does something then you make a decision and, and you're so strong you're at a point where you're like yo i'm good i know my worth I'm going to exit stays left. Mm -hmm. That that definitely helps with this one. Um, issues that are that are bothering you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like it's certain things that are on this list that but, just from a personal growth mm -hmm. standpoint, you know what I mean? You're able to deal with those things a lot differently. Now, issues that are bothering you. And can, can you read that first and then because I got if things. something is bothering you, it can be tempting. <clears throat> It can be tempting to stay quiet in an effort to keep peace. However, is it, it is important to address issues before they become big problems. Staying quiet about an issue is essentially lying. So make the effort to sit down with your partner and talk. Because relationships are not cut and dry. You know, like, I wish it were that you met someone and you guys had the understanding that we're getting to know each other and we're moving in the direction of being in a fully committed relationship, even if we're not there. But it just, not, that's not real life, right? So when you when you first meet someone, you do kind of, there may be some things that transpire that may make you feel uncomfortable or that you don't like or that you may want to address, but you don't want to come across as being nag, a nag. You know what I'm saying? Or complaining about everything or even being negative. And so you may hold on to that and just kind of see how things evolve. And then, you know, at some point you'll decide to kind of, you know, if you see it worth fighting for, you'll make a point to have that conversation. Because it's not like I wish like the way you think, I wish that there was more of people, more people like that. But it just but it could be. So here's the thing. Um because I, I and I know we've talked about this in many shows, yeah. but I think that the way that a person, the, the man or the woman can effectively express mm -hmm. how they're feeling or where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the person who's expressing it, you, you have to put away pride, ego, whatever. Even and, fear. And think, think of that person in that moment to see how you can get this out. You know what I'm saying? So therefore they can they can take it. Even if you don't get a response, it's just so they can hear what's on your mind and where you're coming from. Okay. You know what I mean? Like a, a lot of times we express because we want to hear. Right. Sometimes some things may be good just to express, just to get it off. And it's in the air, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you can come back to it if you're not in that space. You know what I'm saying? But it's just being respectful of each other at that time. Like, I know for any, I, I would like to think, right, just me and assuming anybody in this room, it don't matter what, right? I could be like, let's say, for example, and I love pairs of shoes, but what if I was like, man, don't shoot ugly or fuck, you know what I'm saying? She'd be like, damn, bro, what's up with you? Or I could be like, P, man, I don't, I don't really like those today. You know what I'm saying? Like, see how I'm, I'm totally, like, giving in. So that way she, like, 
it's all good, dear bro. Like, I, you know, I like them though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could. I'm just trying to give an example of how you can like bring out information to get the person so they're not in defense mode mm-hmm. because that a right. lot of times that's what it is, right? And we have to be the people who are in control of that. And I know right. it's hard. You've been hurt. You know what I'm saying? So you're trying to express something and you're you're coming from a place where you're frustrated, you're tired, you're whatever you're feeling. Right. But if we could do it in a way that's healthy, yeah, that changes the whole dynamic. So then words like nagging and this and that, them don't even become words. That's just you expressing your feelings because you have the right to do so. Right. Yeah. Preaching on y'all ass to <laughs> It might be the white shirt. I don't know what it is. What man. is it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a white I'm shirt. in my feelings. I told y'all I'm in my feelings today, man. There's a lot going on, man. Emotional peak. So what about this one? Your ongoing money issues. Few people are truly great with money, so don't feel bad if you aren't the best at saving. Do, however, be open and honest with your partner about anything that can impact them like a huge amount of debt. These secrets will be revealed eventually, and if you aren't honest with each other up front, it can spell the end of your relationship. That's a, that, you know what? That's one of those things that's such an easy fix. Why you say that? Because for one, um, just by just by communicating that, I feel like it lets the other person know. Because I would like to, uh, I'm just gonna assume again. This is my opinion. How many times are people, both people, gonna come together to have poor spending, poor management of money? You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that. That kind of rarely happens rarely i'm not saying it doesn't but mm-hmm. i feel like it rarely happens so somebody is responsible right you know what i'm saying so right or or even if they're just a little bit more responsible than you i guess that mm-hmm. that could be another way to look at it that's just that's just somebody pulling that person mm-hmm. to the side and like yo let's let's try to go through this and let's try to let's try to fix that but i need you to be open and be you know be honest about what you got going on so we can work work through this right you know what i'm saying that money thing like that's that's something y'all can especially fix. if you got gambling issues oh that's i don't that's know like, that's a deal breaker yeah no Jeez. look mama says how many red flags you got huh no man that i don't have yeah, that many, i don't have that many red flags sir but if you gambling, like you might take, try to take my money and gamble. What do we have this joint account? And then you yeah, empty no, the account that's just, out. That's not good for building a home or anything. Yeah, like you like, trying no. to buy, you know, no. especially if you got kids. No, you, you think that's wrong? No, I, I, I don't. I don't. I respect it. I respect it. I so respect how many it. Deal breakers you make I just no. I'm not making you feel <laughs> no kind of way. I just wanted to ask. I don't have. I mean, that's one of those um, topics gambling specifically that i wouldn't even i mean it doesn't there's people that got problems but you know what i'm saying like that's something that i guess the reason why i was saying that because i that's something i don't necessarily hear every day but i mean you know it's not like, like somebody it, right. that got like a true like a true gambling, gambling problem. problem right that's what when, but when she said it, it made me think like yeah. what i no, want to and i and that's a no but that's I not something that's on the top of my brain so real. i don't have that many sir but hey, hey queen you look, gonna get to somebody your mama <laughs> your mama, mama? Yo, i can't see you know i can't she see said, nothing sometimes expression is best done when you're not angry let your partner know when you have settled down that you would like to address the problem at another time what's it you seeing that yes my mama said that she said that mama hey listen man we're gonna have to pay for that now you can't just be giving away that good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what man, that is nothing that's I you know what I agree. I agree with that. I know sometimes with me though, I be so hot, I be wanting to get my point out and I be wanting to talk like right now. Cause it, you know, you have that anxiety, especially if you got something going on, you have that anxiety going on and you just want to get it off, like you said. But then you want feedback. You like you want to hear what that person is thinking and just having to wait through the whole Guarantee idea. you'll get it if if you cut certain factors off, right? Like what? That switch called tone. This other switch called attitude. Mm-hmm. This switch called negativity. This switch called whatever it may be. If it's not helping in the conversation, because mm-hmm. you, we can all. I'm telling you, I could tell you right now, Chanel. Um, your nails, like I like the shape of them, but you know the color. I wouldn't really like. You know what I'm saying? Like, is there you like, like oh red? You ain't like red or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But. <laughs> I'm not really like doing that, and I can smile yeah. about it. It's it, but trust me, it the nails be a, look good. But what I'm saying is, like, right. 
it's just certain I ways take that, it in a yeah, we way. can have a conversation. It's just, but a lot of times has to work on. the emotion yeah. behind it though, like I could, I think by the time you get to where you're communicating, I know for me, I hold on. So for me, believe it or not, I don't say something right away. I would have mauled it over in my head a million times, put it to the side, left it alone, came back. Nah, I'm not going to address it. And then it'll be something that'll trigger all of that. And then it comes up and boom. I got all this emotion. I know. I'm not saying it's right. Here's the other part, right? And here's here's something that's really important. She said you learn from the best. Who said that? Your mama. Hey, mama, I love you. (laughs) And I know your birthday in a couple hours, too. Oh, happy birthday. (laughs) (laughs) But so think about this, right? You you said how you don't speak on something and then something will trigger you yeah. and then it brings about all this other stuff. Yeah. So you know what else gonna frustrate you? What the fact that you didn't even get out what you initially set to get out. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just by having communication and just keep opening up that dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Even even if it ends up not working out, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just certain things that if we can all have that across mm-hmm. the board how how much different it'll be because a lot of times which is a great and i'm glad you said it it's a great point whether it's it could be a man or a woman how many times people are upset about something mm-hmm. and they want to talk about that particular thing mm-hmm. and they kept it in mm-hmm. and then something triggered them and then they talk about something else that didn't even have nothing to do with what they was mad about mm-hmm. initially so now y'all ain't getting nowhere because he or she done brought up some shit that happened last week you know what I'm but saying? But they wanted then, that. They wanted that issue addressed too. They just didn't. I'm, get, not, I'm not saying that, but but that. but then it, <laughs> but I then again that. too. You know what I'm saying? Like how tough is that? When it's like, damn, oh, are you mad at me about some shit that happened three weeks ago? Yeah, that's because they held on to it for three weeks, trying to get past it so they wouldn't. But bring... see, but here's the thing, y'all. So G with it, y'all look bring up some shit that happened in 2018. You're right. In, it's the anxiety July, over the summer. And you like, bro, I ain't what? <laughs> I be overcome with anxiety. That's what be what. I be trying. I really do. But I feel like there's just so much like power in like just saying it like when you feel like because I used to have that problem like really bad. Like I would just hold on to stuff and mm-hmm. because I would just be like so wrapped up in my emotions. I wouldn't talk about it. And I hold on to it until, until something just came out. And it's just like, no, because there's so much more power in just like taking a few moments process what you really want to say like the root cause of what is bothering you and then just what like, if you're afraid what like, are you afraid for? i have had moments <laughs> where it was something that i wanted to address and talk to but i was afraid so Long i'm trying person. to kind of communicate I'm, it I'm, I'm, I'm i do agree with that because again chanel like because you don't want the risk not that i know but what she's saying is just li- listen how strong that is if you building with somebody we ain't just talking about like you and somebody dating right we talking about like y'all done passed all that you building with somebody mm-hmm. wrong person if you feel like you can't be open with your not that own, it's not that you I can't be open like, yeah but you shouldn't feel scared though okay you shouldn't. Okay. That's just my opinion, really, man. You shouldn't feel scared. Well, I, I, maybe I, maybe I used the wrong word and scared, but just no. That's that's real. Not even, people not, are fearful yeah. because they don't want to be judged. They don't want somebody or not to, wanting to provoke a certain type of emotion. Yeah, it's all of that. Mm-hmm. But but again, it's about you. So mm-hmm. you have to make sure that you're good and that you express that. Yeah. And if you don't, how do you expect that person to do it? It won't happen. Because it's definitely a prison to be like trapped in your thoughts and feel Absolutely. like you can't express what you That's need. The anger. Because That's the anger. That's the right. And you get to see how they react to it, especially when you deliver it in a calm way and you just say what it is and you come direct with it. Usually you get most of the, like, the better responses out of that, especially if you're not saying it in a provoking mm-hmm. manner because... Mm-hmm. You definitely shouldn't feel like you're nagging at someone or anything like that. Like, if that's just how you feel, that's just how you feel. And if they don't accept that, they're not the one, right? And, and too, uh, another thing that that does is all of that stuff that you had way back when, Yeah, that might open the door for you to be like, you know what, can I ask you about something else? And now you starting to have more dialogue and getting some clarity to some other things that's going on. Right. I appreciate y'all. I want to give a shout out to Aaron. Aaron is one of our panelists on Ministry May 4th. Aaron was on Ready to Love. What's up, Aaron? All right, guys. So 
We're going to talk more about secrets when we come back. It's relationship status with your girl, Chanel. Your boy, Jay Powell on Power 108.9. 108. <laughs> That our man come conversation earlier. That shit was deep, wasn't it? What's no, this was bad. This was bad. Ooh, did that hurt? Ooh. Your mama said she love you too. Thank you, son. Well, she talking to She didn't just say that. Yeah, she did. Oh, no, she did say something. She said, when you're overwhelmed with that issue, a, a she said, a compile, a compile the issue, a compile. You come up and you don't resolve the issue that sparks the fire. Thank you for the birthday, love. You welcome. When you're overwhelmed with that issue, a compile, a compile, the issues come up. And you don't resolve the issue. She right. She said when you overwhelm with that issue, essentially what she's saying, a whole lot of other issues come up and you don't resolve the issue that sparks the fire. It just depends on your money. Because I'm, I'm like, for me, when I go into a situation, I'm already like, you know, you're trying to do one of the things that you don't have to do it. But it's making it worse though. Yeah. It's okay to be selfish. Yeah. It's okay to be selfish. <laughs> Wait, no, you queen. It's showtime. <laughs> No, bro, you can't, you can't let, you know what I'm saying, you can't let it sit in your head, bro, we gotta get it up off of there. I would just say, when I have my brain, bro, I can't see right now. Hey, you're definitely getting your friends out, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Did you see how she laid it on top of that, top of that thing, then laid it on there? Hi guys, it's your girl. You get straight up by the mud, you can't imagine this shit. I've been pulling up in the dark with the baddest bitches. Young nigga been focused on my check. Got a new coupe around my neck. Oh, it's your girl Chanel relationship status. Your boy Jay Powell checking in again. So guys, we just we've been talking about secrets and we've been talking about the difference between privacy and secrecy. We've been talking about Secrets that could potentially ruin the relationship. And essentially, we just pretty much boiled it down to having open communication. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are your close? We have some closing thoughts. Do you want to? <coughs> <laughs> Shout out to Riverdale High School. So the truth is, most secrets can take a toll on your relationship. If the secret prevents your partner from knowing the real you or causes you to lie all the time, then it'll likely cause problems down the road. Trusting your partner and opening up is the only way to avoid damaging your relationship. While you don't have to share everything about yourself, it's pretty darn obvious when someone's keeping a big, dark secret. Sharing what's on your mind is not only healthier for you, but essential to a happy relationship. Hi, y'all. There it is. So there, there it goes, guys. So before we go, I, you know, I got to, I got to do the shameless plug. So Ministry is May the fourth, Saturday, May the fourth at the Spaces Building. Get your tickets, Ministry.eventbrite.com. We did the panelist reveal this week. We got some amazing people on the panel. If did you put Jesus on there? Jesus is the first and foremost. Jesus was there before anybody was there. Respect. So 
<laughs> you so crazy. So, you know, if you guys haven't already, go to the um, IG profile, check out the flyer, check out who's going to be there. I don't want to put myself on front street and try to call each and every person's name because I might forget somebody, so I ain't going to go there today. But, um, yeah, go ahead and get your ticket. Saturday, May 4th, um, Space is Building, Ministry, a relationship platform. And follow us on Instagram, Relationship Status Live. You got anything you want to say? Please follow us. Please follow us, y'all. We're so cool. We are cool. We thank y'all. We thank y'all. For being on this journey. Amen. Let the chat say. Amen. Peace, y'all. So, good people. We're going to end this thing off, man, and tell y'all how much we love y'all because it ain't enough love shed in this world. We appreciate y'all, man. Y'all stay positive. Y'all keep it popping. Y'all keep it moving. moving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uplift somebody. You know what I mean? Tell somebody that they dope, that they fire, support them, whatever, man. Spread more love, man. Cut all this unnecessary stuff out. Yeah. And get back to some adulting, please. Adulting. Alright guys, see you next week. Huh? What happened? Y'all ain't plugged Power Week. We didn't plug the show? No. Oh, my bad. Can we do it again? Oh. <laughs> we we over this. But anyway... All right, guys. See you next week, Thursday. What is it? April the what? 18th, 9 p.m. Power 108.9. Relationship Status Live. Check us out on YouTube. Relationship Status Live. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Relationship Status Live. Follow your boy, Josh 21 Powell, on Instagram. Follow your girl, Chanel Nicole Scott, my whole government name. Is that good enough? Power 108.9. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs>